A few weeks ago, Asus teased its upcoming gaming handheld, the ROG Ally, which included promises of delivering up to two times better performance than the Steam Deck. Now, when the news started trickling out on April Fool's Day, there were some thoughts that it might be a joke. But now, today, we're here in Brooklyn to get a hands-on with the ROG Ally and to see how serious Asus is about living up to those claims. So what we're looking at here is a 7-inch 16x9 display. Now, what's really interesting is that this is a 1080p display that runs at 120 hertz. So we're looking at a pretty significant jump up from something like the 800p screen on the Steam Deck. On top of that, it's got a 500 nit brightness, and it just, you know, from what I'm seeing right here, it looks really good. Now, the other really interesting part is that on the inside, this is running a new Ryzen Z1 processor from AMD. Now, that's the same, gonna be the same family as the Ryzen 7000, but AMD has designed this specifically for mobile handheld PCs like the ROG Ally, and that's when we're getting into the really interesting performance claims that Asus is touting. When the system is set to 15 watts of power, they're looking at about 50% better performance than the Steam Deck. And when you pump that up to about 30 to 35 watts of power, Asus is claiming double the performance. Now, those are some really impressive figures. We're not able to do full benchmarks right now, so stay tuned for that later. The other concern is that the ROG Ally has a 40 watt hour battery, which is pretty much the same as what you get in the Steam Deck. So when you're talking about a higher res 1080p screen running at 120 hertz, this thing could drain power even faster. And on top of that, this ring runs Windows, which is obviously another big advantage because you don't have to worry about compatibility when you're using something like SteamOS, which is a Linux-based system. Now, let's talk about the design itself. We got a pretty standard layout. We have dual analog sticks on the left and right. There's a D-pad right here and some face buttons. There's also two shoulder buttons on the side. Now, if I flip the device around, you can see there's also a paddle in back on each side. Now, hey, you don't get two paddles like you do on the Steam Deck, but it's really nice having at least something in the back. And of course, you can customize these buttons and settings, which is always really nice. Back to the front. You can also see that there's uh, two stereo speakers, which are supposedly pretty loud, but obviously in this kind of demo space, it's kind of hard to tell. So we're gonna have to wait to test those out later too. But what's more interesting is that you have some really handy shortcut buttons on the front. These top two buttons are your standard menu and like system setting buttons that you get on an Xbox or a PlayStation. But what's more interesting right here is that on the right, you have a button for Asus's Armory Crate app. So you hit that and suddenly you get a quick look at all your installed games. And this is a touch screen, so it's really easy to use. So you have your content, your settings, and your game library. It's kind of Asus's version of their own launcher for all the games on this device. And then what you have here on the left is that you have your command center, which is a really easy way to access all your hardware settings. So you see you have your uh, turbo mode, your control modes, game profiles, keyboard settings, FPS limiter, resolution settings, and refresh rate settings. Now, what's really, really nice is that you, with these control modes, you can easily switch between desktop, auto, or dedicated gamepad mode, which is really nice for compatibility, because especially on certain older games, say they don't detect dedicated keyboard, they might not boot up or run properly. So it's really nice to be able to set that if you need it. Although most of the time, you're probably gonna just wanna leave it in auto. Along the top, Really, really handy, you have a power button with a built-in fingerprint sensor, and it's a single sign-on sensor, so you should be able to boot it on, and it should launch straight into Windows without any other additional prompts. Over here, you have a rocker for volume, very simple. You also have a micro SD card reader, a standard headset jack, and up here, you have a USB-C port along with support for Asus's XG Mobile dock. Now, this lets you hook the ROG Ally up to Asus's XG Mobile dock, and it should unlock an even higher tier of performance. The one downside is that, number one, you have to have the dock, and honestly, I'm not really sure that I wanna plug this into a dock on a regular basis, but for those of you who already have one or might have one from owning one of Asus's Flow laptops, you can unlock an extra tier of performance, and Asus makes the XG Mobile with up to an RTX 4090 mobile graphics card. So when you're pairing that with the Ryzen Z1 chip, we should be talking about some pretty serious performance, especially out of a system this small. Obviously, the big downside to that is that the XG Mobile Dock starts at $1,000 and goes up over $2,000 if you want something like a 4080 or a 4090 GPU. So there's gonna be a definite impact on your wallet there. Really quickly, let's boot into some games. So right here, we're looking at the standard Windows 11 screen, which is very familiar to everyone. And the nice thing is because it's running on Windows, you get support for all of your various game stores. So you see we have Steam in here, you have Xbox Game Pass, so pretty much anything you can think of, Epic Game Store, EA Play, what have you. Here we are in Forza Horizon, and I can already tell that the colors are way more saturated on this thing compared to something like the Steam Deck. Now you can see it looks really, really smooth. 
Now I know that might not come across on camera, but this already feels like a much more powerful approach to handheld PC gaming than something like the Steam Deck. And if we tab over to the command center, you can see I'm operating on performance mode. There's still one more mode higher than that, which is a turbo, but also you don't need to run it at turbo to get really smooth gameplay. I'm also noticing that as I play, there's a little bit of haptics built in. I'm not entirely sure where that's coming from, but it might be uh, you know one of Ace's custom solutions. So you do get a little bit of force feedback. It's not super intense, but it's nice to have that layer just because you know it adds a little bit of extra immersion to your gameplay. Now, one other thing to mention is that Asus says they worked really, really hard to control the fan noise on this thing. So you see in silent mode, it'll turn the fans down. Obviously, you don't get quite as much performance. What's really interesting is that I don't hear this thing at all. Yes, we're in a loud room, but even when I hold it up to my hand, it's really, really hard to hear. And when I compare that to my Steam Deck, which has a very noticeable whine pretty much all the time when I'm using it, that could be one of the really big differentiators between the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck. Now, here we are in the settings screen, and there's one thing that I do want to call out, is that Asus included Wi-Fi 6E on the ROG Ally, which is really important because obviously you can play your games locally, but if you want to do game streaming on something like Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you are going to really want that super fast Wi-Fi. So it's nice to see it included on the Ally. So now we booted up Street Fighter V, which is going to let me talk a little bit more about the design and the control scheme. We have the analog control sticks, which feel great. One thing to consider, though, is that unlike the Ionia 2, they're not Hall Effect joysticks. They're your standard analog control sticks. Although there is some hinting that they might be user replaceable, so if you want to upgrade to more sophisticated joysticks later on, that might be a possibility, but we're still waiting on confirmation for that. As far as the D-pad goes, it's got a circle-shaped D-pad, which I'm not a huge fan, especially for fighting games. I really prefer the traditional cross-style design. Face buttons feel pretty snappy. They're just a little bit of looseness if I'm going to really nitpick, but obviously it's not a huge deal. If you're not a dedicated fighting game player, you might not even notice at all. But, you know, hey, we're handheld, we're gonna make do. The other thing to consider is that Asus said they have spent five years refining the design of the Ally. So they got started work on this way before the Steam Deck was ever released. And you can see on the sides here, they have these angled contours, which is supposed to make the Ally really comfortable in the hand. And they do, except they're kind of missing that pronounced grip on the back. So if you're someone with bigger hands, this thing might not be the most comfortable for you. But it's also designed so that if you're sitting at a table like this, it kind of tilts back naturally and it doesn't really stick out in a way that is annoying or cumbersome. That said, if you are sitting on a couch, which is, I think, for me, one of the main ways that I play a game handheld like this, it kind of remains to be seen how comfortable that's going to be for a longer period of time. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about in terms of design is its weight, because the ROG Ally comes in about 608 grams, which is about 1.3 pounds. And it's a significantly lighter machine than something like the Steam Deck, which makes it much easier to carry around. And when you think about because of the lack of those pronounced grips, it could fit in a couple more places that a Steam Deck might not, especially because it's a little bit narrower too. Now that I've had a chance to play around with this thing a little bit, I'm really impressed. I still want to play with it some more, especially during longer play times, to see how it really fares. And the performance of that new Z1 chip from AMD should be close delivering on those promises of significantly improved performance compared to the Steam Deck. You're still getting really good thermals, and its fans seem significantly less noisy than the Steam Deck, so there is a lot to like. And I do have some concerns. When you're talking about a 1080p native screen, 120 hertz refresh rate, and a battery that's about the same size as the Steam Deck, this thing could really suck down juice. A lot is gonna hinge on the price of the ROG Ally, and unfortunately, Asus hasn't revealed specific information about that yet. So we're gonna have to wait till they tell us more on May 11th. That said, if Asus can deliver something in the $800 range, it doesn't even have to compete with the Steam Deck because it can be a more premium version of a handheld gaming PC. But the thing that I'm most excited about is that after the Steam Deck came out last year, we're suddenly inundated with a whole range of handheld gaming PC devices, and it's turning into a really big trend, and I can't wait to see how all these devices stack up against each other. But before we go, I do have one other piece of fun trivia. Now, I had a chance to talk to some of the employees at Asus, including the VP of the ROG brand, and I actually learned that Asus, as an entire company, was originally founded on April 1st, which is why they did that April Fool's Day release, even though it might have been a little bit confusing. Anyways, as always, don't forget to subscribe to Engadget, and stay tuned for more news, hands-ons, and videos real soon.